Hello everyone, welcome back. This is tutorial number three, part two, basics of programming. Um, if you remember last time, what we basically did was we made a method that was going to return a string value called hello world. We're going to pass it the string name and up here within our constructor, which is the method that always starts first, we made we call that method hello world and we're passing it the value of Greg is great or Greg the great because I'm great alright so if I hit F5 here which will start our debugging process you'll notice that it's gonna run you're gonna see IE for a quick second and then it's gonna go right to hello world like we did in our um, breakpoint example so let's give it a second. I'm actually compiling the last video while I'm uh, doing this tutorial. So kind of trying to do multiple things that this computer might not be so inclined to do immediately. So give it a second here. Okay, so we're hitting here. That's great. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is like we showed with, uh, with the last video again with um, Watch. As you can see, that name right now is nothing. Okay, so it would per technically return the value of nothing. I moved it over to here. Okay, and now I'm going to hit F5, and the next thing it should do is hit this breakpoint, right? Because we don't need this method to pull to call this method. Okay, so I'm going to hit F5, and look at that. It hit return name, and if you look down here, now name is equal to Greg the Great. Alright, so I have five, and it's not going to actually do anything on the screen, but now we, I, you see what I did. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove these breakpoints, so we already know the process of what happens. And before the return name, now, one thing I want to show you actually real quick, because it will burn a lot of people at first. So if I put something here, okay, we're going to do text block one, right? That's that text block at the bottom. Before I even, oh no, I think it actually is going to wait until you're done. So dot, um, let's see, if the text um, equals uh, name, okay? And you think, hey, this is hunky dory. We should it should be great. You got this little green green squiggly here. And if we hover over, it says warning unreachable code detected now there's a couple things here first of all why isn't it down here well that's because you have if you look here there's one warning see these are really tabs they kinda don't look like tabs um, I don't really like how they do this but it, in either case if you click on warning it's gonna show you your your warning if you sh click on just errors or click off warning and click errors it's gonna just show you your errors okay so you actually have to click off of them apparently I didn't realize that that nice okay so back to the uh, program in hand here so what does that mean unreachable code detected well because you have public string instead of public void which means it wants you to return a value the moment it sees return that means that that is the final line of that method Okay, so as soon as it hits this, it's going to go back, return the value, and you're done. So it is never going to reach this code. That's why it says unreachable code detected. Okay, so if I get, I just did Control X right there to cut it, and we'll paste it right there, and then boom, we're good. Okay, so if we hit F5 and run this, now we should see Greg the Great within uh, the text block. And hey, look at that, Greg the Great within the text block. So, as you can see, so this was really a basic tutorial. The reason I want to do this is because we're going to be doing things like um, uh, showing how uh, setters and getters work. Um, and let me see if I can actually uh, go over that now. Actually, we're in four minutes, so I might go over setters and getters now. Um, and uh, let's see. We have um, also when you do stuff like domain service classes and authentication service classes. Those are all things that you need to understand classes and methods to be able to work with. So I wanted to go over this real quick before we go into other stuff. Just so if you're watching my tutorials from day one, um, you're going to want to understand programming. And this is just really basic. You know, there are a lot of tutorials out there if you want to go down and dirty into the nitty gritty of it. And as we go into things, if I think that um, something comes up, 
um, you know, that might not be obvious if you don't do heavy programming, then I'll go over it. Please feel free to shoot me a message if uh, you think that's something I should have gone over in, in the next tutorial. If I feel it's valid, I probably will. So, um, anyway, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to set up a class that's going to have a setter and getter. And uh, we'll put some breakpoints in and show what all that is. But I'm going to pause this so I can set that up uh, before we go any farther. Okay? So, hold tight and I'll be right back. Hi there, everybody. So, I'm back here. Let me just make sure I am recording here. Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry, it's a new application. I haven't really figured out with Resume yet. Um, so, uh, I was going to set up, actually I, want, I really kind of wanted to delete this here, so I'm going to delete that so that we make it fresh here. Um, so, I wanted to explain setters and getters. Now, I just made a new folder called Classes. I like to keep all my classes in specific folders. Um, if it was a specific like validation, um, I'd probably call this validation.cs. Um, we'll go over validation of like forms and stuff like that at a later date. Um, but what I wanted to do here was basically what I did was I clicked on the uh, project here, right clicked, and you can do add and then add new folder. That's how I add the folder. And so under the folder, I did add and then class. And it will allow you to name the class and then you're done. You'll notice as you go, you're going to do a lot of add new items for things. Um, as your applications get. Um, bigger and fatter. So it, right up to here and here was already pre-made for me. Okay, it made your uh, your class the same name as the CS file which is needed, it's necessary. And then these are what are called properties within my class. Okay, these because they're public it can be accessed like I said before outside of that class. Um, the easiest way to make these in um, Visual Studio is if you choose PROP, it's actually a code snippet that that is already in um, C Sharp's uh, snippets by default. And if you hit Tab twice, it'll make the shell for your property. Okay, and then you can change this to string. It doesn't matter what word float. It doesn't make a difference what you call it. Um, well, it makes a difference, but you know what I mean. It doesn't ma make a difference which uh, type you make it. All right, now, you'll notice that there's these two things called get and set. Get allows you to get the, um, get the value, and set allows you to set the value. If you were to get rid of set, it becomes read only. Um, and I'll make that point a little later on here, but I'm going to try to go a little quicker because I know we started at five minutes here for this one. So the first thing you need to do is when you, um, because you, I made this inside of another folder, you need to add it as a using because it, even though it's a name, it's the right namespace, it's within another folder which makes it part of another section. Okay, so if you do first YouTube dot and then classes is where it's located in the center column, okay? This allows you now to what they call instantiating an object, which is instantiating a class. A class is an object, it's, it's, they're used synonymously, okay? Um, so now that we use, added that using, I can do setters and getters, okay? And it knows that object, if I were to hover over it, it says, oh yeah, that's a class inside the classes folder. Okay, nice. We'll call it my properties. Okay, this can be called whatever you want to call it. Doesn't make a difference. Equals new setters and getters. Okay, and this is the same way that if you want to make your own text box, like we made this input text box, if you want to make your own text box within code behind, you do the same thing. Okay, you got te whoops, you got uh, text box. Okay, uh, text one equals new. New. I'm trying to go fast here, and you can see how that's working out well for me. Okay, and um, then with doing that, just like we did here, now if you do text one, okay, whoops, man, text one, okay, which is right here, dot, you'll notice it inherited all the properties of text box. Okay, there's text for you. Now you'll have to add it as a child of the layout root, but that's something we'll go over later. Um, which is a whole another um, thing. We'll go over children and um, probably stack panels at the same time, I would guess. So, 
anyway my properties okay so now you'll notice that my properties is available and if I hit dot you'll notice that the two forget about the rest of this stuff right now but you'll notice that full name and age my two properties are actually here okay accessible so we can do that and then we can do equals Greg the man okay semicolon and what we we'll actually do here is I'm going to make, create on the fly a string name underscore name equals and then that's going to equal to that property okay and then in hello world here we're going to do underscore name okay and you notice everything looks on Kadori and we're all good okay so what I did here was I instantiated my properties or instantiated setter and getters into my properties I created on the fly a new variable string under named underscore name and set it equal to my properties dot full name which it does have a setter attached to it so we can attach now let's say I was said I was going to show you this let's say I got rid of the setter here okay we got an error here what does the error say property or indexer cannot be assigned to it is read only so it is saying full name I'm sorry buddy but it's read only you can't you can't set that okay so if we go back here now it's gonna go away and now it's not read only anymore it's read write okay and because it's public it's read write to any classes within the net within that namespace so let's hit F5 and let's see if it actually works alright Greg the man there you go so that's the conclusion of this tutorial we already went over to 11 and change I really didn't want to go that far I'm trying to keep them at 10 minutes so that's enough for this tutorial and uh, next time we'll go over some more stuff alright um, probably a little more in the programming stuff um, but same, same thing kinda of showing you around a little bit so that when we get head into the silver light like with data grids and validating forms and stuff like that you're not lost in the lost in the code as as far as what a setter and getter is, what a property is, and all that good stuff. All right. So uh, have a good day, guys, and I'll see you next tutorial.